So we're in our second week. We're in a month of November. Last week I, I talked about how much I love Christmas, but Christmas needs to hold its horses, right? And I was at a friend's house yesterday who will remain nameless, who's already Christmas decorating, and it's encroaching on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Thanksgiving is not only my favorite holiday, but it is one of my favorite things to do, which is give thanks for everything that I've had. I, I counsel people all the time, and they tell me how bad their life is. And I said, I mean, I'm compassionate, but the reality is the worst people in the United States have it better than like 95 to 99% of the people around the world. I, I literally watched a video and wept because there are Haitian kids that eat these dirt pies. They literally get this dirt that has very, very little nutritional value in it. And the women mix it up with water. They make a slurry. And then on a basketball court, they put out big, like, bed sheets. And they make little circles. They dollop it out, and they make little these, these cookies, these dirt cookies. Mind you, the basketball court is right next to a little ravine that the kids walk in that has raw sewage going down it from people's houses and huts and whatnot. And people just, they just go to the bathroom there. And these kids eat these dirt pies. They're hard. They're white. They're disgusting. And I just, I just weep about how hard people have it. And then we have it so good. And yet we are oftentimes so ungrateful for what we do have. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because I know how much gratitude and how much thankfulness will transform your life if you just do it regularly. An apple a day keeps a doctor away. Thankfulness a day keeps the doctor away, the mental doctor, the heart doctor. Being thankful for what you have. I want to ask you some questions this week. I'm not going to recap all of next week, but I want to ask you a few questions right now. And you don't have to raise your hand. But you do have a card in front of you. I want you maybe to write this down. You're not going to have the questions. But I I want to ask, on a scale of 1 to 10, how content do you feel about your life? What level of contentedness do you feel about your life? Are you a 10, like, man, everything, it's all good. It's just all good. Or maybe maybe you're at a 3 and you're like, man, most days are bad and I don't want to get out of bed. Maybe you're at a one, like, my life is terrible. I, I don't want to live it. It's not fun living. I have nothing to look forward to. Nobody cares about me. What level in your life, what level of contentedness do you live with? Where are you at on that scale? One to ten. Ten being the most content. I, I don't think often enough we take inter- introspection of our own lives why we're living our lives, how we're living our lives, what we're doing in our lives. Are we enjoying our lives? How do you feel? How content are you? Second one, how good are you at expressing gratitude and giving thanks in all situations? How good are you? Like, are you, you know, like, a little kid at the playground, are you JV, maybe you're varsity, maybe you're knocking it out of the park, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're like an NFL quarterback, just you're like really good. I know those, I know those analogies, one was baseball, one was football, yeah, you can glare at me that way, but I'm asking you a question seriously. How good are you at expressing gratitude and giving thanks in Not some circumstances of your life when you get a raise or when things go well or somebody compliments you for the project you just did, but when you're looked over or when you think nobody sees you, you think nobody cares about you or how you're living or what you're doing or whether your life makes a bit of sense at all, whether you matter in this world. How good are you at giving thanks in the mundane days, day in and day out, for the things that we can be grateful for, like, you can raise your hand on this one, hot and cold running water, right? Like one of the questions this last week, what's your, what's your, what's the, your favorite thing or what's the thing you're most grateful in your home? And I think Bart said plumbing. It's like, of course he said that because he makes water and waste go directions that it shouldn't go and ways that it should go. 
But the reality is we have so much to be grateful for. Not everything in our lives, but we have so much. But in that, we can still be grateful for everything in our lives. The next one is, how much do you experience negative emotions daily? Like on a daily basis, how often do you have like that thought like, oh, they couldn't get any worse, or of course I'm going into this meeting and it's not going to go well for me, or anytime you have that, that thought that's not positive, it's not neutral, but how often do you have negative thoughts running on the, the hardware you call your brain, how much of that code going by is just negative emotion? It's, it's going to go bad. It can't get better. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm swamped. I'm overwhelmed with my life. How much anger, bitterness, envy, resentment, sadness, greed, etc. is running on that brain that you have going in your head? How much of that is running constantly like that's just the hum, the hmm of I'm awake and there's negative emotion going? And the last one, if you had the option to live your life or somebody else's, which would you choose? If you had the option to live your life or pick anybody, somebody else's, which would you choose? Because the answer to that, if you're content, would be there's no other person in the world that I would rather live that life except for mine. Because I'm uniquely designed and I'm uniquely placed and I'm a unique individual made with God in God's image and God's glory to do certain things in this life. And there's nobody's life in this whole world that I would rather live. I want to live mine. And if that's not your answer, it's not shameful, but we can get to that place where it can be your answer through gratefulness and thankfulness and gratitude. See? Part of the world that we, part of this, this situation we live in in the world, uh, and even in Christianity, the prosperity gospel, it sells us on this lie that we want to believe, right? We want to believe that we can be healthy and wealthy and wise, and everything is going to be good in my life right now. If I just give a little more, if I pray a little harder, if I do a little bit more, then my life is going to be better, and there will be no catastrophes in my life, no suffering and yet that's not what Scripture teaches us. See, these, there's these emotions that run in our life. There's these, there's these things that go on in our lives, like envy and greed, these negative emotions that keep us in this state of anxiety, right? Like that's why people want to believe in a prosperity gospel. If I just give Jesus my life, my life is going to be better. How many of you ever heard that somewhere? Just, just give your life to Jesus and your life's going to be better. Well, I can attest, and some of you are grinning and smiling and nodding your head, that that's not the way that it is. That's just not reality. Think of a person in your life that you think is content and peaceful. Think of somebody. I'll give you a moment here. This is interactive today. Think of a person who you think is, maybe it's you. If so, congratulations. That's an amazing place to be. But think of a person in your life that you think is content and peaceful. Now I want you to think about that person. Is that person motivated by envy and greed and the trappings of this world? I see some of you shaking your head no. See, the, the Bible reminds us that this life, in this life, there will be suffering, but that we can find contentment even in the suffering that's the secret of Christianity. That's the secret of a relationship with Jesus Christ is that in the brokenness of this world, because we live in a broken world, a fallen world, we can be content whether it's good or whether it's bad times. That's the secret that I want to give to you. That's the secret that I live out most every, I mean, I wake up positive like every single day. It probably makes Janie really upset. You can watch her nod. But the reality is, and I'll probably talk about this a little more, it's because I just am thankful for everything that I have. Like I said last week, when people ask me, how are you doing? I say, better than most and better than I deserve. And I don't just say that because I want it to come out of my life and I want to get kudos for it. I believe that. Why? Because I know me and I don't deserve everything that I have. I don't deserve a loving family. I don't deserve the kids that I have. Those are all gifts from God. I don't deserve the wife that I have. All those things 
And even when I'm frustrated with Janie or with my children, it's like I still got to look at the positive and I go, man, I'm so blessed. There are people in this world who don't have any kids and they just want one and I've got three and I could have had more. I didn't want any more of them, but I mean, well, we're going to get some more anyways, but just not the baby stage. Janie wants the baby stage. I don't want that. We're going to get some little foster kids that we're going to get to adopt and, and I want to give them I want to give them the gift of what family looks like. I want to give them some things. See, again, the Bible reminds us that in this life there will be suffering, but that we can find contentment. See, contentment, it's not what you have. Your things will never, listen to me here. Everybody look at me. Look at me if you're online. The things that you think you need, the things that you have, the things that you desire to have will never, and I say this, never bring you contentment. They will bring you temporary happiness depending on the monetary value oftentimes. But the reality is none of it will bring you happiness and contentment. It's just not going to happen. Contentment is a state of mind. A mind that's not envying, a mind that's not wanting, a mind that's not saying, getting on the hamster wheel of life, believing that if I just do more, work harder, if I earn more, buy more things, get into that neighborhood, that school, that place, get that purse, get that phone, get that electron, if I have that laptop or that car, the reality is then I'll be happy and my life will be good. But I've said this before, you've gotten a lot of those things And if we rewind to a few minutes ago when I was asking you, how content do you feel about your life? I bet you're not at a level 10. I bet you're not. Contentment is a state of mind, a mind not envying or wanting. It's a state of being, but it's also an emotion. Reminder, most of our suffering is a result of ungratefulness for what we already have. Most of our suffering, my suffering, your suffering, is ungratefulness because we don't think about all the good things that we have. And we're ungrateful and unthankful. So what makes you think that if you get new things, you're going to be thankful for those and content in those moments? You're not going to be. Remember this, I said last week, all suffering is experienced in our minds and in our consciousness. I mean, your, your limbs, I mean, you can... Like this morning, I was telling Bart, we were joking. He's like, welcome to be an old man. Welcome to being an old man. Because I said, it feels like there's no lubrication in the joint in my left hip right here. It just feels like it's bone on bone. And I was like, it hurts bad. But the reality is, I can be content even if I have pain in my body. My body is telling me, hey, you should be, you're in pain. This is a problem. And my mind is going, yeah, but I got things to do and there's good things for my life and I'm moving forward today. And you know what, right now, my hip doesn't hurt at all. I could have laid around in my bed thinking, you know what, my hip hurts too much to walk this morning. But oftentimes, and I learned this playing hockey and doing things, if you just start moving your joints, you just do it, it gets better. See, even physical pain can be mitigated by the mind. There's a Harvard study, and this is interesting. Harvard study uh, research suggests that basic pain involves both the mind and the body. Mind-body therapies may have the capacity to alleviate pain by changing the way you perceive it. If you've been in pain for a while, listen to this, your brain may have rewired itself to perceive pain signals even after the signals aren't being sent anymore. Your brain, your mind, the consciousness that you live in, the reality is you can feel sick, you can be broken in your mind with physical pain, even though your limbs, your extremities, and your body are not sending those signals anymore. That's what science is telling us. If we indulge the pain, if we indulge the discontentment, then it rewrites onto the software of our mind the negative emotion, I'm in pain. And we take on that identity. I'm broken. I'm in pain. I hurt. I have nothing to give. All those things become who we are. It rewrites upon our mind that way. That's amazing stuff. It's like people who have lost a limb and they have phantom pains, right? There's not a limb there anymore. There's my aunt. She lost her finger. And she said for the longest time, she would have to scratch an itch at the tip of her finger that wasn't there. 
Positive thinking, it says this in this Harvard study, when we're ill, we often tend to become fixated on what we aren't able to do. Retaining, retraining your focus on what you can do instead of what you can't will give you a more accurate view of yourself and the world at large. Dr. Slosby, she says this, she says, she advises keeping a journal in which you list all the things you are thankful for each day. We may have limitations, but that doesn't mean that we aren't still whole human beings. Science is telling us, research is telling us that it's all in our heads and we can learn to rewire it. We can rewire it one way by saying, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. And then when the pain's gone, your brain still says I'm in pain. Or you can be thankful and grateful for the things that you have and rewire the brain, your brain to say, man, I'm not in pain and things are good and my life is well and there's good things for me. And then when you wake up in the morning, even with pain, you say, you know what? I got good things to do. I got a place to go. I'm thankful for what I got. My wife, my kids, my job, my home, my money, my ever, whatever I have, the hot and cold one you're in water, microwaves, they're amazing. Like milk that I don't have to milk a cow for. That's great. It just comes in a jug or two when you got to buy it for a larger family. But I digress. The reality is we have so many things to be thankful for. If we could, if we had the time, we literally as a group of people could stand here today and list things we're thankful for until it was dark and it was tomorrow. We have that many blessings. So how do we get to this state of mind, this emotion, this place of peace? How do we get there? We do something that seems counterintuitive. We give thanks. When we want to complain, we give thanks. When we want to argue, we give thanks. When we want to play the negative motion across the software of our mind, we give thanks. We look to the things that we're grateful for, the things we already have that we're ungrateful for, and we give thanks for those things. It's that simple. It's hard, but it's super simple. The thing I love so much about scripture is this. This was written, like, we're going to dig into it. This stuff was written a long time ago before we had the science that tells us how our brains work. One of the reasons I believe is because the more science learns about how we function and how the world came into existence, the reality is we're learning more and more that a book that was written thousands of years ago, or books that were written thousands of years ago and hundreds of years ago, already had it figured out. Why? Because they were connected with the God of the universe that made everything, wired it all together, and said, this is how things are supposed to be. You want to have a content life? Give thanks. Be grateful for what you have, and don't focus on the things that you don't have. I genuinely wholeheartedly believe this is why so many people and Christians are not at peace. Because Christians, we, we've bought into the worldview too, right? Like it, we still watch TV and watch ads. We still are marketed to, oh, you need that. You got to be in this school district or you got to be here. Or you're not going to be happy. You got to have this brand of clothes or you're not going to be happy. You got to have more kids. Your kids got to get good grades. Your kids got to get into that college. You got to pay $500,000 to get your kids into that college. Okay, not my bad. I'm going too far there. So here's what I'm going to say. Give thanks, and this is, I want to be clear. Give thanks in, not for. When you're suffering, you don't have to give thanks for your suffering. You have to learn to give thanks in your suffering. What am I saying? When I woke up this morning and my hip was hurting, I hope he didn't do that just so I had an illustration. And when I woke up this morning and my hip was hurting, I could have said, oh, I don't want to get out of bed, and maybe they can just do it without me, and someone else can talk. I just said, man, I get to get up. My kids want to come and set up church with me in the morning. I get to get up and go see some of my best friends in the world. I get to go figure out things. I get to go tell people the secret of life and how to be content. I get to do that. And the more that I came here, the more that I did, really, within the first two hours of waking up, the pain had almost subsided completely. And it was hurting. I didn't even want to get in my truck this morning. 
and, and now it's gone. I don't know whether, my, whether it's still there, whether it's a problem. It might be, but I'm not going to a doctor anyway. I don't know whether my brain rewrote the software and said it just doesn't hurt. Keep going. My wife's shaking her head because I never go to the doctor, and I won't probably, most likely. But we need to give, learn to give thanks in, not for. What does this mean? You don't have to be grateful that you're suffering or that you're in pain, but you should be grateful in your suffering. I have so much to be grateful for. And I just started listing those things in my mind. It was a wonder that I'm teaching on it anyway. So I'm like, I better do it, you know? And then here we go. It's like, hey, it's another day. You know, I'm, I'm going to experience pain again. I'm getting older. Some of you that are older, tell me where you're going to start experiencing, where I'm going to start experiencing pain. Bart welcomed me into old manhood this morning. So apparently I'm there. He's there. He's got the beard to match. And now I'm there because he inducted me into old manhood. See, giving thanks for suffering is not helpful. Giving thanks in suffering reframes and refocuses our brains on the positives and emotions follow. That's why when you, that's why when you hugged me this morning or when we said hi, that's why I was happy to see you. I was grateful that you were part of my life, that you're in my life. One of my dearest friends is paralyzed in a bed in Long Beach. Some of you have gone with me to see her. Some of you have gone on your own to see her. Sharon Kramer is a woman, she's an amazing woman. I met her in front of a Circle K and uh, probably bought her cigarettes, I don't know. Uh, but that's how we met. She came shortly after to our serve four, four, four or five years ago to our Halloween serve. She joined this church. She gave of her life. And recently she's had cancer attack her spine and she has been uh, ill and now she's in a bed. I'll tell you, all the days when Sharon Kramer was out of the hospital, oftentimes her mind was just wandering and it was difficult for her. There's always something going on. And I've watched this woman go into a bed. She's now paralyzed. And every time I go see her, she is an inspiration to me. She's texting me on Sunday mornings, happy Sunday. She has so much to be grateful for and yet, most every experience in her life has been taken away from her. But she's not thankful for the suffering that she's in and the pain she's in in the bed, but she's grateful for the relationships and the things that she has in a bed in Long Beach, most of the time alone. I've got something I want to read on gratitude. Why gratitude matters. It's possible to feel grateful toward loved ones, colleagues, animals, mother nature, and life in general. The emotion generates a climate of positivity that both reaches inward and extends outward. That's true. Psychologists find that over time, feeling grateful boosts happiness and fosters both physical and psychological health. Even among those already struggling with mental health problems. Studies show that practicing gratitude curbs the use of words expressing negative emotion and shifts inner attention away from such negative emotions as resentment and envy, minimizing the possibility of ruminating over them, which is a hallmark of depression. Further, the beneficial effects snowball over time. Brain scans of people assigned a task that stimulates expression of gratitude show lasting changes in the prefrontal cortex that heighten sensitivity to future experiences of gratitude. This is good stuff, guys. The emotion, the emotion literally pays itself forward. Being grateful, giving thanks, pays itself forward. It rewires your mind. It remaps your mind to experiencing the world differently. You ever wonder how two people can go through the same experience and one of them will go, oh, it's not that bad. I've had worse. And somebody else is devastated by the same experience. It's likely that one of those persons is grateful for the things they have and their mind is rewired and trained in a different way. So when we experience negative things in the world, it's like, Okay, that happened. Water off a duck's back. Let's move forward. What's next? What else is coming? And other people are devastated by it. It's, I mean, it, I'm the more positive of Janie and I. She struggles a little bit more in, in that regard. And yet when she was 
uh, doing a painting for our home. It's right here to my right. She's doing a painting to make our beige wall apartment less beige wall apartment, right? And she wanted to make that. And I love it. I'll tell you, I don't even think she knows why I love it so much. Because it says, be grateful down there in the teal. I don't know if you see the symbolism, and I don't know that she did this on purpose, but when I look at it, I see life that's gray and dull and plain and blank and boring, and I see gratefulness invading the blank and boring, dull, ugly parts of our lives. Gratefulness and thankfulness has a way of changing what we experience, how we experience it. And then it changes all those around us. Amen. Positive people attract people. Positive people attract. See, for the longest time, I thought I was lucky to have this positive worldview. Like, I don't know why. I just wake up. I tell, I've told people for years, people who struggle with depression and whatnot, and I've helped counsel them, and I don't know what that's like. I don't. Like, I, I think I've been depressed for like nine hours of my life, and that's a blessing, and I'm grateful for that. And that wasn't all nine hours at once. It was probably three minutes here and seven minutes there and an hour there. And, and I'm just saying, this is, but I, I, thought, I thought for the longest time, right? For the longest time, I thought I was lucky to have this positive worldview. And now I realize... I've built and grown that worldview with my actions, my speech, and my thoughts. When I look at things in this world, when I see people, I see the best in them. How can I help them see the best in themselves? I live my life that way. And I'm sure some of it was, uh, was just given that. I was just given this, this positive attitude. But I've definitely helped that along. And it helps many people along. And you can be that person if you start to be grateful and thankful for the things in your life. If you encourage people and then when somebody else is discouraged and complaining, you don't jump into it. It's so easy to jump into complaining, isn't it? Oh, yeah, if our boss and so on and so forth, such and, you know, it's like, oh, man, it's terrible, right? But you ever, know, you ever notice anybody pops in there and they go, that's not a big deal. Like, we'll just do it this way instead. And all the people are complaining are like, Go raining on our party, man. Like, we were having a good time over here. But you can learn to be that grateful person that brings people out of the gray and brings gratitude, injects gratitude and thankfulness into people's lives and gives them the secret to whatever. One of the things I want to talk about this morning is becoming a, a joy miner. Bart laughed when he was putting in, when he was putting the notes in. He, said, he started making the crack and a couple jokes over there. Enjoying the moments even when everything isn't going well. There's something in every one of our days that goes well. There's something in every one of our lives, in every one of our days, most likely in every single hour that is good. And if you don't believe that, the reality is you live in America, you probably don't have a risk of being thrown in jail for doing nothing, just living your life in the way. You're free. You have liberty. There's always something to be grateful for, enjoying those moments. I, I hear are still in, there are still enjoyable moments in the drudgery of each day. I believe it because I've had some days that are they're just pretty much bad. Like you get bad news. You found out you've got cancer or you found out you lost your job or you found out or you found out or you found out. But there's always something good in that day. There's always something. And you got to learn to mine that. The secret of being content is mining the joy out of each day, focusing on the positives, those things, writing those things down, like we, I read in that bit, journaling those things. It's the secret. Happiness isn't the goal because happiness is fleeting. Contentment isn't a place, but it's a way of being. It's a way of minding. Like if you have this being, you'll learn how to mine the joy out of life. Start doing it. I love what Vanessa's doing on social media. Like every day, there's something to connect to. If you can't think of something to be grateful for, on Instagram and on Facebook, there's a challenge each day. What's the thing you like most in your house? What's the, you know, what are you grateful for? Name a person and text a person that, that means something to your life. There's always something for us to be grateful for, but we have to learn to mind those things. 
You have to mind joy in all situations. Like I can look at my life and go, man, I got to cook dinner every single night for people who are oftentimes ungrateful because they're this big and they have different tastes and they want to complain about everything. But the, the reality is even in my, my cooking, right, I get to s- smell those smells. Like there's fresh food in front of me. That's not rotten. I'm not having to dig it out of a dumpster. I get to eat good food, whether my kids like it or not. I don't care. They can make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I get to make good food that I enjoy eating and my wife enjoys eating. And I get to think of the one or two kids, depending on the day and the meal, the smile that it'll put on their face. Dad, that's my favorite, right? That I'll put a smile on their face. I can, face, I can look at cooking as a drudgery or what am I going to make or, or I can, while I'm doing it, I can think, about the smiles I'm going to put on someone's face, the kids that I'm sustaining them for another six or eight hours, and they're growing to be good little boys and girls and men and women, and we're raising children who are the next generation, and, but by feeding them a single meal, a single solitary meal. Doing laundry. I don't do laundry, and I'm grateful for that. Janie does laundry, and she's really good at it. She's so good. If you want to pay her, she might do your laundry too. I just pay her in love. I love you, babe. Laundry. While you're doing laundry, there are people in life that don't have clean clothes. There are people in life who don't have a way of cleaning their clothes except being in a dirty river with feces running down it. And their, go, their clothes go in dirty and potentially come out a little bit cleaner. Likely, you have a machine that you put a couple quarters in or you pay the bill on a monthly basis and you drop in a Tide Pod and it comes out clean. And then it dries, it dries itself and you just got to fold it. But, but your clothing, your family, your clothing, yourself, you get to think about all those things and be grateful for those moments where it could be drudgery. To, I mean, I've heard Gino a couple times complain about having to go to the laundromat, but Gino has clothes. And I have clothes that are clean. And I'm mostly, I change my shirt after I get all sweaty. Work, the experiences that it provides you. What about work? Like you can be bummed about having to get up and go to work. Well, what about all those experiences, right? What about the billions of people that would switch places with you in a heartbeat because they can't make 25 cents a day? Reality check. Reality check. I don't make enough money. Try living on a dollar a day. What about the people you work with? There's some good people there. I know you guys cut up. But you get to get on Facebook while you're at work. You get paid to be on Facebook. I know some of you are getting paid to be on Facebook. I don't know who. I'm looking for the smirks right now and the smiles. Be a miner of joy by practicing gratefulness. I want to say this. To be content doesn't mean you don't desire more. It means you're thankful for what you have and patient for what is to come. It's a quote by Tony Gaskins. I'll read it again. To be content doesn't mean you don't desire more. Just raise your hand if you desire more. Don't lie. All of you desire more. Something. You all got a Christmas list brewing in your head right now. I know. It's creeping in on Thanksgiving. To be content doesn't mean you don't desire more. It means you're thankful for what you have and patient for what is to come. Happiness and joy and contentment can be found in this life, certainly, but this broken world wasn't what God had in mind. It will be better. It's going to be better, but we can still find contentment. I'm going to try with this analogy. I might swing and miss, but I want you guys to think of this. You know the feeling when it's like Thursday, if you work a regular normal work week, and you're like really looking forward to the weekend, but Friday stands in the way? Like it's Thursday and you're like, man, if I could just cut out tomorrow or work a half day, it's like I just want to get through this thing, right? And then Saturday's here and then Sunday and maybe it's a long weekend like this, but it's Veterans Day and I'm going out of town and I got this little vacation or this trip and I'm so excited for it. But Friday, stinking Friday is always standing in the way. We never get off on Friday. We always get off on Monday and Friday's always in the way when it's Thursday. There's two approaches to this. We can make the best of it. You can work hard 
You can enjoy your friendships with your coworkers. You can bring in a box of donuts to make the time go by, get some smiles, make everybody else's Friday who's waiting for the long weekend also, like bring a little joy, inject a little joy into that. You can go in with a little bit of a pep in your step and say, man, I'm so excited. It's Friday because tomorrow is Saturday and then it's Sunday. I get to go to church and be with all my friends. I got to meet with Jesus, and then Monday, I got the day off. We're going to do this or that. We're going to barbecue. We're going to smoke some ribs and whatever. It's going to be good. I've got a good weekend ahead of me. So you can approach Friday that way, or you can go in and, man, I can't wait to get out of here. Man, the clock's going so slow today, and, you know, you just... Oh, of course the boss wants me to finish that report. I thought I could put it off until Tuesday. Or we got to get this order out and get it shipped. And I can't believe it in the warehouse and the machine broke. And which one do you think sends you into that, li- that weekend in a better mood and like ready? Wh- which way do you think time goes by better? If you bring in a box of donuts and you're in- encouraging everyone around you and you're excited and you bring that positive attitude or you go in, man, sucks to have to be here and I wish I didn't have to and of course we got to get that thing. I mean, come on. We get to choose, right? This life... Is like being on Thursday. And we can choose what Friday looks like. We can go through this life and go, man, this life is good and I can make a difference here and I can do that. And then someday it's going to be the weekend. I'm going to heaven where there's going to be no suffering. There's only going to be joy. I'm not going to cry about anything anymore. It's not going to be bad and I'm not going to hurt in my hip, which doesn't hurt anymore. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm not going to have pain. I'm not going to have mental anguish. I'm not going to have to pay another stinking bill in my whole life. You know what? We get all bummed out. I got to write the check to the electric company. I got to pay the electric company. Doggone it. I'll pay 80 bucks a month or whatever to have electricity in my whole house for the rest of my life. I'm thankful to pay my electric bill. I'm thankful to pay my water bill. I'm thankful for those things. Why? Because it provides me a lot of joy and a lot of luxury in this life. The reality is this life is short and we can come into it like Friday and bring in a box of donuts and we can encourage everyone around us and it will change our mindset. And the reality is it's going to be Saturday and we're going to be in heaven. Things are going to be great. We can find all this contentment in the world. I'm going to burn, I'm I'm not going to burn through, but I'm going to go through a couple passages of scripture real quick. Matthew 6, 1 through 4 says this. It may not make sense right off the bat. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do it as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and the streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth. They have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. The question, the big question is reward you with what? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. It continues on. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. That's how it starts next. Reward you with what? See, the the scripture doesn't tell us what the reward is, but I think I know what the reward is from experience. Silencing the greed in us is huge. Knowing we have helped another human being is massive. When you give to someone else, it is more blessed to give, to be a giver than it is to be a receiver. Realizing you made a difference satisfies. Believing you are a good person and loved brings contentment. When you give, when you serve, when you love, when you do these things, the reward for you, you may think, oh, it's a, you know, a a gem in my crown. I'm not going to care about a crown when I get to heaven. That stuff's figurative. I don't need a gold crown. I don't want a gold crown now. Like if you gave me one, I'd be like, melt it down. What can we do with it? But I don't want a crown. I don't want a gem in my crown. The reality is this. I get the reward from giving to people, giving my life, serving others. And it's part of the reason I'm content. I think it's a major component with the reason that I'm content in my life. 
I'm going to push these next scriptures to the next week because I'm going to go through the rest of Matthew 6 because it's good. It's good stuff. I'm going to, so I'm going to push 5 through 6. I'm going to push that on. But I want to say this. No, I'm going to have to, because I'm skipping that, I've got to edit right here a little bit. I'll say this. I'm being honest with you. I have no reason to lie to you. I'm not going to ask for a big offering that goes to me. I don't get paid from this church to to get up here and teach. I tell you these things because I believe they're going to make a difference in your life. I believe if you're watching, if you do these things, if you give, you're thankful, if you're grateful, I believe it will radically transform your life in the way that you see it. I believe it will rewire your brain. And you will be a different person six months from now, a year from now, just like working out your body. If you were to go to the gym, if you work out your gratefulness and your thankfulness, you will be crushing it mentally a year from now, six months from now, three months from now. Your life, your prospects, your projection of the world, it'll be better. It will be if you're just grateful and thankful. Guys, this is the truth. These are some of the most truthful ideas this world has ever heard. This is why I love Thanksgiving, because Christmas sells me on getting stuff, and stuff doesn't satisfy. But Thanksgiving says, if you do this, if you Thanksgive, your life will be transformed, and it doesn't matter what you get in December. You won't need a shiny plastic thing for your life to be content. You'll be content in here and in here. And that's what matters most. That's what we're looking for. See, I have no reason to waste my time lying to you. I believe these things to my core. That's why I'm a lunatic for the kingdom of God, for building the kingdom of God. His presence, God's presence renews our life when we give thanks and we're grateful for him. Paul explains it this way in Romans 12, 1 1 and 2. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The way we change the way we think is by being grateful and thankful for the things God has done in our lives, for the things that we already have. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I want to play a video here for you, and uh, and I'll come up and close. Say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. That's why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every moment that led to this day. Thank you for the hard times. They made me appreciate the good times. Thank you for the lessons. They were needed for my development. Thank you for my eyes that get to witness the miracles of today and tomorrow. Thank you for everything I take for granted. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for my drive. Thank you for my spirit. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for giving me the courage to fight through the hard times. Thank you for the people in my life, those I love and those I learn from. Thank you for it all. Thank you. Thank you. It's the key that opens the door to instant happiness unlocks the door to everything we are really seeking in life, happiness and contentment. Think about it. No matter what you say you want, money, riches, health, to help others, why do you really want it? When you drill deep down, the only reason anyone wants anything is the feeling we believe we will get from having it. That all boils down to happiness and contentment. 
And the truth is, we can have it now if we are grateful. And if you get quiet, get away from the noise of the world, and think for a moment about what you could be grateful for, I'm sure you could find plenty. Be grateful there's food on the table, air in your lungs, life in your body. Get grateful that you have opportunity, opportunity to take your life to a whole nother level, to decide right now that you are going to live your dreams and never settle until you do. Get grateful for the mental strength you've been given to survive the hard times. Get grateful for your limbs if you have them. Many are not so blessed. Your eyesight if you have it. Many are not so blessed. Your hearing if you have it. Many are not so blessed. The health you do have. Many are in worse positions. Get grateful for that one person that has had an impact in your life or many people if you are so blessed. Then get grateful you can choose to be that person for someone else. That one that makes a difference in someone else's life, no matter how small. Get grateful you get to experience this magical universe. Today, look for miracles. I guarantee if you are looking, you will see them. There are unlimited things to be grateful for. Open your eyes. Unlock your amazing life. It's ready for you right now. Thank you for this day. Whatever it brings, whether a challenge I need to grow, a lineup to teach me patience, an unexpected blessing, every moment of joy, whatever today brings, thank you. Whatever it brings, I pray I have enough presence in each moment to know that no circumstance is my life. No high or low, no event, no thing is my life. Life is energy, and I know I'm so much more than my physical body. Thank you for my ability to love, to give to others my authentic love and kindness without expecting anything in return. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my presence. Thank you for my ability to attract only the things and people that are in harmony with what I need in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this day, whatever it brings.